Hi folks, Joseph Kursky here with you to talk about maps as more than reference documents. Maps are not just, where is Mount St. Helens? Oh, there it is. Uh, next. No, maps are doorways of discovery. Maps are ways of analyzing and understanding our world from local to global scale and all that is in it. So this analysis activity that we're going to work on together here on earthquakes is going to, I hope, reinforce that point. Let's start with an interactive web map and do some basic spatial analysis with it, shall we? Go ahead and open a new tab in your web browser and open this map right here. The map will look similar to this, with the exception that your map of earthquakes will reflect the last 30 days from the time you open the map. So now I'm hoping you're thinking, gosh, it's, it's real time. Yeah, it updates. So there's increasingly greater numbers of maps that use real-time feeds, wildfires, earthquakes, traffic, etc., stream flow, etc., to understand our world, right? The world is a dynamic planet, and we've got increasing numbers of sensors that are tied to geography, i.e. the Internet of Things. So GIS, spatial technology, is acting more and more like a like a nervous system of the planet, right? Your body has a nervous system. It's regulating all of your vital organs. Without it, you wouldn't be here. GIS, spatial technology, is acting as, the, as a nervous system for the planet, helping us to monitor and regulate and plan for a more sustainable, healthier, happier future. So this is an example of that. This will be a map with the last 30 days of earthquakes, along with an ocean's base map, which makes sense. Right, We actually do care about earthquakes in the oceans. That might be a leading question for your students. Why do we care about if there's earthquakes in the oceans? Right, We only care about the ones that are on land, right? And hopefully they'll say, no, 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 we do care about the ones in the oceans. And you'll say, well, why? And hopefully they'll say, well, because of tsunamis and, and also peace, people living in uh, coastal cities, uh, close to oceans, etc. Well, this map uh, has an oceans-based map and six map layers. Earth's tectonic plates, polygons and labels of the plate names. Earthquake faults. Plate boundaries, four types, a line layer indicating the type of plate boundary, earthquakes by depth, earthquakes by magnitude, and world volcanoes. Six layers. Note that if you expand Earth's tectonic plates, you have additional layers available, including fault lines, which are visible for Australia and elsewhere if you zoom in. Some layers, like this one, are they have a, a scale dependency. In other words, as you zoom in, it's like a visibility setting that you can control, uh, but the default is so that you don't see every single detail at a small scale. That would be way too crowded on your map. By using the spatial technology skills that you've already practiced, such as zooming and panning on the map, turning on and turning off map layers, changing the base map, and opening the data tables, you can answer the following questions. So, for example, about the ocean floor and plates. What does the ocean floor along the mid-ocean ridges along a plate boundary look like? What do a few of the deep ocean trenches along the plate boundaries look like? What are some of the depths that you can see in these trenches on the ocean base map? In what units are these depth, depths given? Which are the largest two plates? Which plate are you living on? Now about earthquakes, you could ask some of these questions. Which earthquake was the closest to where you live? When did it occur? How far was it from your school? What is the spatial pattern of the last month of earthquakes? How many earthquakes are in the data set for the past month? Does this number surprise you? What is your estimate of the percent of earthquakes on land over the past month versus the oceans?
which plate boundary type seems to be associated with the most earthquakes. Now about volcanoes. How many volcanoes exist in the data set? Which volcano types seem to be associated with the most earthquakes? Which volcano is the closest to your school? How far away is it? And in what direction is it? Now about cities on the topographic or open street map base maps. Which major world cities seem to be in seismically very active zones? You, as a creative instructor that I know you are, could probably think of many additional questions to investigate. These are just a few. As in other lessons modeled in this module, you could stop your instruction at this point without using any additional tools, right? So if you're teaching primary and you ask a few questions based on this map, end of story, end of lesson, you're done. But if you want to dig deeper to expand your spatial technology skills, let's move on. In the next section, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of deeper digging into the earthquakes data. But even right there, hopefully you're seeing that if you just open that map with those layers in it and ask some deep probing, thoughtful questions, you've got a really rich tool with which to teach. Thanks. Thanks.